Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence's Driving School. Here we have another test route talk through and this is a great test because the candidate actually passed. Shouldn't act so surprised, people do pass. Now we've missed the first bit where the, um, the candidate came out of the car park and we're just a couple, well one minute in basically into the test route and we're coming up to the Tesco's roundabout to turn left. You've got to be very careful on this roundabout because they do come round on the inside lane nearest to the roundabout and that's when a lot of candidates pull off there but the inside lane can swing over into this road and if that happens that's well you're pulling out in front of a car which is always a serious fault. So we're driving up Pitesley Road which is a very common test route and uh, Got to be careful of your speed here. It's it's a 30 miles an hour road all the way up, of course. So just keep an eye on the old speedometer. Make sure we're not breaking the speed limit. Lovely day for a driving test, this one. Nice and sunny. And the car behind is keeping their distance, so it's all good. We had some pedestrians there. Got to be careful of them. Don't Maybe if you can pull away slightly in case they slip off the curb got to be very conscientious line of traffic on the right probably leading up to the pedestrian lights behind us and uh, not a lot to say really on this road there is a mini roundabout coming up and uh, when we get there we're going to be turning left So car pulling out in front, I hope the uh, candidate check their mirror there and off they go heading up towards the the roundabout. Now before the roundabout is a waiting car mirror check in case there is a uh, information board there we call that a leaderboard sometimes. We're going to be turning left so we do our mirror checks interior mirror and left door mirror and we're coming up to the line looking over to the right. Is there anyone coming from the right? Nice smooth stop, that's good. And uh, that van behind got a bit close, didn't he? So just keep an eye on him for future stops. Coming down to the next roundabout, just keeping on the van. He's backed off a bit now, so that's good news. And at the roundabout ahead, we're gonna be going straight over. So uh, carry on at the roundabout will be the instruction. Looking over to the right, all looking good. Straight over, you haven't really got time to signal off of this one because by the time you've got to the signal, you have actually just left the roundabout. Pedestrian lights coming up, mirror check. Just make sure we know how far the vehicle is behind in case we need to stop. I do believe the candidate's gonna be turning left or are we doing a stop? Well, we're doing a test stop here. This is normally the hill start and as we're pulling over the lorry was overtaking us so I hope there was a signal well there was there must have been and uh, when you're ready just move off again so interior mirror check right door mirror check and a blind spot check when it's safe we're going to be moving off so just waiting for that car maybe I think our rear view camera is a bit out of sync here didn't notice that and are we going? Just wait for these two. Well, oh, okay. Well, we're here for a while. Probably a lot going on behind. There's a motorcyclist and car. If you're waiting for a very long time in a long queue of traffic, you can put what they call a begging signal on. You can signal right and just wait if it's really busy and then hopefully someone will slow down and give you the space to pull out. So uh, this could warrant a begging signal in my opinion because there is such a non-stop flow of vehicles but the candidate found the gap and off we went thank goodness. So if it's really busy like that yeah you can put a begging signal on and just wait and see if someone's going to allow you out. We wouldn't normally do a begging signal but if it's really busy, then we should do so. We're turning left into, uh, 
oh, I can't remember the, is it Hawthorne Road? Um, when you turn left into these tight roads, keep left, keep tight in case there's a car coming and you might need to hold back straight away. There's some crossroads coming up here, so make sure you know your crossroad rules and who has priority. Coming up to the first one, candidate spotted that really well. Spotted the signs and the road markings, left, right, left, right, keep creeping people a little bit before you decide to carry on into a 20 zone. Hope the candidate saw that. Pedestrian crossing, so mirror check on the approach. And off we go up to another crossroads. So we can see all the road markings leading up to it, a giveaway sign, a giveaway triangle. And it's a peep and creep job. Make sure you can see left, right, left, right, left, right, because there's loads of parked cars. You can't see it on the video, but there's loads of parked cars left and right, and you can't really see to pull out safely. And we're just coming up to the uh, another crossroads, which I believe we're going straight over that one. And once again, spotting the spotting the crossroads. And it's a creep and peep job again, left, right, left, right. And off we go into, I think they call this the Crescent. And coming down here for another test stop. Are we gonna stop? There we go, nothing behind us. And when you're ready, just move on again. So the examiner will ask you to stop a number on a number of occasions for all sorts of reasons. One is so they can, fill up their forms on their iPad. Another reason is so they can uh, test you on hill starts, convenient parking, angle starts, and things like that. And if you're not checking your, what's this? Oh, and if you're not checking your uh, blind spot, they might stop you a few more, more extra times. So the candidate's been asked to stop again. And, that's a lot of stops, isn't it, in the first few minutes of the driving test. So it might be that this is where they will start the sat-nav, because I can see a hand moving around there. So I presume the sat-nav, the undirected drive, starts from about here. So, yeah, it looks like this is the undirected drive. So from this point onwards, the uh, candidate will be following a sat-nav until further notice. I mean, the sat-nav normally goes on for 20 minutes of the driving test. And that's probably where it started just there. So they were being voice controlled or directed by the examiner up to that point. And now SatNav is on, so being directed by the SatNav. And off we go along this road. Being mindful of the pedestrian. If there's a pedestrian in front, it's always a mirror check and maybe start decelerating. Don't accelerate up to a pedestrian or you really need to respond to that pedestrian. At the end of the road, we're going to turn left. So we're done our mirrors up to the line, checking it's safe. Very tight circles there. And off we go. We've got some signs up on the left. First sign is ahead, left turn only ahead. Coming up to the, uh, to the giveaway. And that's other blue sign in front, turn left only. White car behind us, keep an eye on him. And we're taking the next road on the right. Keep on your side of the road. Lots of learners go over the line here for some reason. I don't know why. There is no line anyway. you just got to kind of imagine where it is, the centre line. And off we go down to the roundabouts. And uh, this is the double roundabout system in Kettering. And um, this roundabout... Oh, we jumped back a bit there. Excuse all the jumping. It's I can't turn it off on the camera. As it, if it thinks there's an event, it, it jumps back again and saves it twice. So I do believe we're turning left at the second roundabout. Now you can pull into the left lane if, if the inside lane is definitely not coming over. Now they're stationary there, so I'd probably want to pull out now. If there wasn't a car, there is a red car coming. But if it's clear, you could probably pull out. So off the candidate goes, there's no car behind them in this lane, so that's good. And we're turning left, make sure no one's coming under the bridge. And off we go up Northampton Road. 
and uh, there is a junction here on the left into Lake Avenue but no one is waiting sometimes they pull out make sure you've cancelled your signal when you've turned left there otherwise people will believe you're going into Lake Avenue yeah, jumps back a bit there sorry about that coming up the hill and uh, this is quite often a right turn into Gypsy Lane now this has thrown a few people off this is a bit of a black spot really in tests a lot of people fell here and it's because they can't really work out what's going on now we're turning right into Gypsy Lane um, so we need to move into this filter lane on the right so the candidates done that and some people want to turn into the across the giveaway line there into the wrong side that's very common on test now there is a keep left sign there and uh, you know you'll see it as we turn it's the yellow bollard tells you to keep left so you want to be turning into the left side of gypsy lane not the right side and uh can we see that there well it's you couldn't see it but it's there anyway telling you to keep left of that sign so just remember that because there's quite a few people fell there believe it or not uh, because they're misreading the road markings and the signs and everything else but you do turn into the left side of a road not the right side just keep that in mind so here we are we're going up gypsy lane and we're going to go all the way to the top remember this is a 30 lots of people want to get faster here is it another test stop well there we go pulling over again so the examiner's just explaining to the candidate now that um, they want them to do an emergency stop when the uh, examiner raises his hand he wants the candidate to stop within as short a distance as possible as if someone had just walked out in front of them maybe um, when the uh, when they perform the emergency stop they normally look behind them so it's not a surprise now the emergency stops going to come in any second now so the examiner's look behind and look forward again and now raises his hand and or oh, just a bit of a bit of a skip back there but raises his hand and there we go lovely lovely emergency stop that one it looked very smooth very quick move on when you're ready left shoulder right shoulder mirror check make sure no one's there and then off we go again so there is about a 20% chance of being asked to demonstrate an emergency stop in your driving test and that will be on top of the manoeuvre. So we have to demonstrate one manoeuvre, you learn four on lessons, you have to demonstrate one manoeuvre in your driving test and you may be required to demonstrate an emergency stop as well as the manoeuvre. So it's an extra thing. There's a there's a police speed check there luckily the candidate is not speeding because that would be a ticket and uh, there you go a lovely emergency stop from the candidate and off we go carrying on with the driving test So at the top of Gypsy Lane we're turning left and we're heading towards the Junction 7 roundabout. So it looks like, well hopefully the car on the right, there's two lanes here, the car on the right hopefully has left a bit of room and seems to be, a, seems to be the move forward or moved off. And as soon as it's safe, we're going to be pulling out and heading towards Junction 7 roundabout. When we get there, we'll be turning left onto the A14.
When turning left onto the A14, just remember that there are two lanes from the roundabout that can leave into that exit. So when you're turning left into there, or when you're leaving into that exit, even from straight across, try and keep to the left of your lane when you enter the slip road onto the A14, just in case there's cars coming in from the right. There's three lanes in front of us and the lane one and two both leave into that exit, so we've got to be very careful there. So there we go into the first exit, keeping well to the left, checking the right door mirrors, just see if anyone's coming in from the right, no there aren't. Um, as we come down this road there's some signs on the left, these big green signs are telling you that this becomes a joining lane. So there's no need to come over to the right, there's no need to come over because this lane becomes the left lane of the dual carriageway. Um, make sure you get up to speed, we're looking at about 60 minimum um, in this weather conditions and situation so it's a reasonable speed by the looks of it we're going this unfortunately the, the speed um, GPS system on this camera seems to have stopped working and off we go I think we're going to be leaving here onto the next junction it's only one junction long in this particular test route we're leaving on junction 8 as we're leaving, there are three, uh, there's three countdown markers, 300 yards, 200 yards, and 100 yards. On 300 yards, that's a very good time to do the mirrors. On the 200 yards, that's a very good time to signal. And on the 100 yards is just a bit of a reminder just to keep your speed up when you're leaving, um, if it's safe to do so. We're turning right here, so we're checking our mirrors. And we're checking for anyone coming. If they're, the, if they're the other side of the bridge, there's bridges here, then you can probably go, just bearing in mind the speed of the oncoming vehicle. Coming around this bend, you wanna be changing lanes. So it's a big mirror check here, make sure no one's there. Moving over to the left with a signal, which is what the candidate's done quite successfully. Keep that signal on all the way across the bridge there. And we're leaving into this exit. And off we go. There are two lights here. The one on the left is a green arrow. That's a priority arrow to come through. The one on the right was a red light, but that's for cars turning to the right or vehicles turning to the right into the industrial estate. But if you've got a green arrow that's pointing upwards, which is in the direction of our travel, then you can carry on, obviously looking for all your obvious um, hazards or anything that might be happening. But a green arrow is telling you that you have the priority to carry on in, you know, on your journey ahead. So turning left into Broughton, just keep the speed up there, Not, no real reason to slow down as we take this slip road into Broughton, left turn only this road, another little skip there because of the potholes. Whenever there's a bump or a pothole the, uh, the camera resets itself, it thinks there's a collision or something bad happening. Um, normally when you come around this bend, the examiner says something along the lines of pull up on the left when it's safe to do so. You do want to pull up quite quickly within about 50 yards or so. You don't want to be carrying on up the road 
Where, where's this learner? Where's this candidate going to park? Oh, okay. Maybe they've not been asked on that occasion. Sign on the left is priority over oncoming traffic. And if you're coming the other way, don't forget there's a prohibitive sign there telling you to give way to oncoming traffic. And we're taking the next left where the shops are. So many tests come out into the country lanes around Kettering. It's uh, it's a requirement really in this day and age as most fatalities happen in these country lanes. Um, coming down that hill, just make sure we take it easy over the bridge. It's quite thin. There's a slow in the road as well. So we want to be uh, going slow where it's a slow in the road. Driving down country lanes, don't drive too far to the left in all the debris and the potholes. Don't drive too far over the white line if there's room. Um, just try and stay within a reasonable position in your lane, keeping out of the potholes and not uh, venturing too far over the line. Approaching bends, you'd certainly want to be on your side of the road. And if it's a right hand bend, you might want to pull slightly more to the left so as you can see more as you go around the bend. Up here are very notoriously dangerous crossroads. We've got to be careful here. Many an accident on this crossroads. So it looks like the uh, the candidate's turning left here, so it's mirror checking. And off we go into this road. Remember, it's slowed down to 40 here as well. We saw the signs there. So all of this is 40 until we come back into the national speed limit.
So we're doing a right turn into uh, Pytchley. We have to be very careful here because vehicles do come from the left there it from top end and going through the village we're probably going to be taking the next road on the left when we get through this little bit here Pikes is a lovely village and there we go Notorious right bend here. Make sure you keep to the left of this white line. Try not to go over. Because look what happens. You could quite easily meet a vehicle on that bend. Same with this left turn bend up here as well. Just keep to the middle of your lane on this left turn. Just in case there's an oncoming vehicle. So at the roundabout head, it's highly likely we're going to be turning left. Um, on the odd occasion, there is a there is a right turn there to go to into the uh, pub car park to do a manoeuvre. The candidates not done their manoeuvre yet. They've done an emergency stop, but they've not done the, one of the four manoeuvres they're required to demonstrate. Remember, this is a bend round to the left. Just look at the road markings, and then we're skipping around again on the old video when we get to the top it's a bend round to the right and then a left up towards the test center now if you come all this way and you've not done a maneuver then um, there's a very high chance that the maneuver is going to be performed inside the test center car park so what the uh, examiner will do is you'll come back maybe a few minutes early so as there's no one in there. You've got uh, less interference from other vehicles. And they normally stop you there, but not always in this case. And they, the examiner's already asked the candidate to do a reverse bay park into any bay of their choice. The candidate's been very clever coming round here so that they can come straight back in a straight line. Now this is one way of doing it, it's, uh, it is allowed um, straight back in a straight line into that parking bay. Normally the second one is the one that's directly behind the car. Lots of observations, steering the car between the lines, check, check, check everywhere and uh, very very well done and this candidate 
passed the driving test with flying colours to be fair and that was a lovely reverse park so don't forget you can do that you don't have to count I know a lot of instructors teach the three line technique um, I call this the 12 o'clock technique you just come round and then back in a straight line from 12 o'clock and uh, you're allowed to do that So well done candidate, a first class performance there on your driving test and a very well deserved pass. Um, enjoy your new freedom. If you like this video and you found it useful then please like and subscribe and you can leave a comment below. I, I normally answer all comments, you can ask me any question, I'm more than happy to answer it in the comments. Thank you very much and have a great day everyone.